In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the annual percentage rate, the APR, and the APY, the annual percentage yield. So let's do it through a math problem. A credit card company charges 0.5% per month for any unpaid balance. Calculate the APR. So the APR, or the annual percentage rate, that's equal to the periodic rate, which we'll call capital R, times the number of periods per year, which is N. So for this particular credit card company, they charge 0.5% per month. So that is the periodic rate. Now in one year, how many months are there? We know that there's 12 months per calendar year. And so the annual percentage rate, or the interest rate that they're charging per year, is going to be 0.5% times 12. Half of 12 is 6%. So the APR is 6% per year. So that's how you can calculate the APR in this particular example. Now let's move on to part B. What is the annual percentage yield? To calculate the APY from the APR, you could use this formula. It's going to be 1 plus R. R is the interest rate, the annual interest rate, which is the annual percentage rate, or the APR. N is the number of times the interest is credited per year, which in this example is 12, and then minus 1. Now the difference between the APY and the APR, the APY takes into account the effect of compounded interest, whereas the APR, it doesn't take that into account. The APR is more of a simple interest calculation. So the annual percentage rate is 6%. As a decimal, that's 0 0.06. You need to divide this by 100. And it's compounded monthly, so n is 12. We know that 0.6 divided by 12 is this number, 0.5. So this becomes 1 plus 0 0.05. 0 0.6 divided by 12 is 0.5%, or it's actually 0 0.005. So 1.005 raised to the 12th power minus 1 gives you this number, 0 0.061678. Now that's the annual percentage yield as a decimal. So what we need to do is we need to multiply this by 100 to convert it into a percentage. So the APY for part B is going to be, if you round it approximately, 6.168%. So that's how you can calculate the APY if you know the APR. But looking at these two values, it's not that much different. And the reason being is the interest rate is relatively low. When the interest rate is high, the APY can be significantly different than the APR. But when it's low, they're approximately the same. Now let's move on to part C. What would be the APY if the credit card company charges 20% per year compounded monthly? And let's compare that to the answer in part D if it's compounded daily. So the amount that they charge per year, that's the annual percentage rate, is 20%. So now let's calculate the APY using this formula. 1 plus r over n raised to the n minus 1. So first, let's convert 20% to a decimal. If we divide that by 100, that'll give us an r value of 0.20. Now, compound it monthly. So the interest is going to be charged each month. And it's 12 months in a year, so n is 12. 
1 plus 0.20 divided by 12, that's 1.016 repeating. And then if you raise that to the 12th power and then subtract it by 1, you're going to get 0.2194. So the APY is approximately 21.94%. So notice that this difference is more significant than the last example. Now that the interest is higher, the APR and the APY, they're not very close to each other. The APY is significantly higher than the APR, almost 22% compared to 20%. Now let's see what happens if interest is compounded daily. So we're going to use the same formula. R is going to be 0.20. But if it's compounded daily, what is the value of N? Well, how many days are in a year? We know that there's 365 days per year. So that's going to be our N value. One plus 0.20 divided by 365. That's 1.000. 5479452. If you raise that to the 365th power and then subtract it by 1, you're going to get 0.2213385. So now let's take that value, let's multiply it by 100%. So this is going to give us an annual percentage yield of 22.13%. So this value is not that much different than 21.94%, but nevertheless, it's slightly higher. Thus, as the end value increases, the annual percentage yield goes up due to the effect of compounding. So the interest that's being charged, it's being charged not only on the principal, but on the previous accumulated interest. And so if a credit card company is charging you interest daily, you're going to pay more than if they were to charge you interest monthly. That's what you want to take from the lesson in Part C versus Part D. As you can see, the annual percentage yield will be 21.94% if the interest is charged on a monthly basis, but if it's charged on a daily basis, it's going to be slightly higher, 22.13%. But in both cases, the APY is still significantly higher than the APR. And that's what we want to take into account. If the APR is relatively high, the APY will be even higher. If the APR is relatively low, the APY will be slightly higher, but not that much different. But for the most part, the APY is typically higher than the APR. Now let's move on to number two. A payday loan company charges 10% for a $1,000 loan plus a $20 processing fee, which must be repaid in a 14-day period. Calculate the APR for this type of loan. The annual percentage rate is going to be equal to the periodic rate times the number of periods per year. Well, how do we calculate the periodic rate in this case? You can think of it as basically the earning that this company is making for their principal. So they're making money out of the interest that they're charging, which we'll call I plus the fees that they're charging, which we'll call F, divided by the principal, which we'll call P. So that's going to make up the periodic rate generated by this company. And then we're going to multiply that by the number of periods per year. Well, each period represents 14 days. So how many 14-day periods are in one year? To calculate that, it's going to be 365 days divided by in this case, we'll call n, where n is 
the number of days in a period, which is 14. So capital N in this example is 14. And then finally, we need to multiply this by 100% to turn the answer from a percentage, I mean from a decimal to a percent. But we'll do that later. But for now, know that capital N is 14. Lowercase n is 365 over 14. 14 days is approximately two weeks. And we know that there's 52 weeks in a year. So there's approximately 26 periods per year in this example. If you take 365 divided by 14, you get 26.071. Because there's really 52 weeks and one day in a year. 52 times 7, that's 364. And so that's why the answer is not exactly 26. It's a little bit higher because of that extra one day in a year. But now let's go ahead and plug this information in. So this particular company charges a 10% interest on a $1,000 loan. So the principal is 1000 10% of 1,000 is 100. So they're charging $100 in interest for a $1,000 loan plus a $20 processing fee. And there's 14 days for, so this 10% will be charged in the 14 day period. So they're making $120 out of every $1,000 that they lend. So that is a periodic rate of 0.12 or 12%. And if they do this every two weeks, they can do this 26.071 times in a year. So for $1,000, they can collect $120 every two weeks. You times that by 26, they can collect $3,120 in a year just by using a thousand dollars so that's more than a 300 percent return but let's get the exact figure so if we multiply 0.12 by 26.071 the apr is 3.1285 now if we multiply that by 100 percent the apr in this example is 312.85 percent which is pretty huge but when dealing with payday loans, not everyone is going to pay back the loan. And so this huge interest rate makes up for the risk of not getting that money back. Because some people may take this loan and just not pay it back. And so that's the risk that this company has to take when offering payday loans. So to make up for that huge risk, they charge a huge annual percentage rate.